You're watching Philocase. Our main topic for today is Anaximander. Do you have any idea about Anaximander? His contributions to the philosophy, his life, and his works? And do you know how great he is? If not, great! You are watching the right video. Let's get started! Anaximander of Miletus A lot of people say that he is one of the greatest minds that ever lived. He is one of the philosophers who lived on the pre-Socratic period. He was born on 610 BCE and died on 546 BCE. Anaximander is a Greek philosopher who has written about astronomy, geography, and nature of things. By speculating and arguing about the boundless, he was the first metaphysician. By drawing the first map, he was the first geographer. He invented the gnomon, Ashoka Singron, which demonstrates equinoxes and solstices, and perhaps the hours of the day. Imagine how great his mind works. He has thought a lot of things while I can't even solve a simple math problem. Anaximander is a pupil to Thales, who is also from Miletus, who argued about water as his principle. And for that, Anaximander opposed the view. He changed how people think and view about the world. He was first to develop a systematic philosophical view of the world. Anaximander believed that the earth is like a cylinder, whose thickness is three times of its diameter. He further said that we live at the top of it. He considered that the earth isn't resting or supported by anything but it is floating because it is equidistant from all other things. By that, he has been led to a thinking that the sun and moon doesn't appear and reappear, but things move in a circular motion around the earth. This idea supported that the earth floats in an open space. If it is not supported by something, then it can move in circles. He also made an idea that the heavenly bodies are spaced at varying distances. To sum it all up, Anaximander invented the idea of space. He has thought something about human. He based it on what Thales said, that everything is fundamentally made of water, and used it to explain the origin of humans. Anaximander considered that from warm up water and earth emerge are either fish or entirely fish-like animals. Inside these animals, Men took form and embryos were held prisoners until puberty. Only then, after these animals burst open, men and women come out now able to feed themselves. Therefore, meet your ancestor. What he thought was similar to the evolution of monkey to human. He invented a proto-evolutionary human and anthropology around 500 BC. Hmm. What a thoughtful Anaximander! Thales wanted to find the origin, the beginning, or the first cause, which led him to conclude that it is water. Anaximander agreed to Thales, but he was not fully satisfied about his teacher's idea. Normal elements, like water, contains properties that oppose the properties of other elements. So, how come all things come from the same thing? How can opposite things can even explain by a single thing? So his answer to this problem is Aperon. Aperon means the boundless or the infinite. This is his main philosophy. Aperon is an identified substance which contains or is the root of absolutely everything. It is also be concluded that heaven and earth come from it. Many people, especially scholars nowadays, complain that Anaximander did not explain what he meant by the boundless even in ancient times. Hmm. I wish you could come back in this era and explain why. Anaximander went out of the ordinary experience and proposed something fundamentally strange and unobservable to explain it. This makes him different from Thales. It is a significant step to philosophy by stepping outside of the physical world. Aperon becomes a precursor of the ancient idea about God, the unmoved mover of all the things. Some people doesn't like the idea of Aperon because it is hard to define and vague. It is the pursuit of science and pursuit of ultimate reality. 
only a short fragment of Anaximander's work survived. But despite of that, he contributed a lot not only cosmology but also in philosophy.